So today I'll talk about is the tooth number system. Okay. So in this, I'll be covering the three main systems. That is the Zygmondian Palmer. Then we have is the Universal System. At the last, we have is the FDI. That is Federation Dental International. Okay. So before proceeding further, guys, I came to know that some of you are having difficulty in understanding my previous video that was about the surface of the tooth. Okay. So let me give you a quick revision on that also. So try to recall what I said earlier in the video. That is, let's suppose this is an artificial jaw. Or simply a jaw set, okay? And we have the midline here. Let us consider the upper incisors, right? So I told you a surface which is facing towards the midline is the mesial. So if this is the midline, okay, and this becomes the mesial surface that is towards the midline. A surface facing away from the midline becomes a distal. That means this becomes a distal. Now if I consider a tooth, let's suppose in the lower um, premolars. So what you see here is the midline again. In this case, a surface facing towards the midline is the mesial. This becomes a mesial, and this becomes a distal. Right now, guys, what you see here is the set of the teeth in the permanent dentition, and all teeth here have two surfaces in common. That is a facial and a lingual surface. So facial means labial plus buccal. Okay, so I may say that the upper tooth or the upper incisor here. They may have a facial surface, or particularly I would say a labial surface, because here we have is the lip part, right? Now, if I talk about the lowers or the upper uh, molars here in this case, so here we have the cheek. That means the uh, molars or the premolars also have a facial surface. In particular, it is the buccal surface. Okay. What common here is the lingual surface. That is, you see that here we have is the uh, tongue area, right? This is the tongue. So now the all surfaces are facing towards the tongue. That is the back of the tooth. So that is called as the lingual surfaces. I talk about the upper incisor here in case. That is, we have is the mesial surface towards the midline, distal surface away from the midline, labial surface towards the lip, and the lingual surface towards the tongue. Okay. And one more is the incisal surface. That is the biting edge of the incisors, right? Again, if I talk about the molars here in the lower, so again you see mesial, distal. Then this becomes the buccal, and this becomes the lingual, and the upper is the occlusal surface, right? So this is what you see here in the surfaces of the tooth. One more thing, guys. If the tongue is here. That means all surfaces, that is the upper and the lowers, they are towards the tongue. So we say this is a lingual surface. But now, what if I open the jaw set? Now the mouth is open. Okay. Now you see that the tongue is in the mandible, and here we have is the palate. That that means in this case we will say that is a tooth which faces towards the palate is called as the palatal surface. In the lowers we don't have any kind of palate, right? We have the tongue here. That means for the lowers we can surely say it is a lingual surface. But in the upper it's better to say palatal. So lingual is also correct. But you should always remember that it is better to use palatal in case of upper. That is the maxillary anteriors and the posteriors. And in general, if I talk, then we can also use lingual for the uppers and lowers, right? If I talk about the canines here, so you can see mesial, distal. Then we have is the labial. This becomes the palatal. Okay. And again, if I talk about in the closed position, then we can also say it is a uh, mesial, distal, labial, and the lingual. Right. Again, for this case, we can say it becomes the mesial, distal, buccal, and the palatal. Right. And one more we have is the occlusal in the mol uh, molars area and the incisal in the anterior teeth. Right. Okay. So guys, this is all about the surface of the tooth. Right. So now let's jump back to our main discussion. That is the Tooth number system here. Okay, so today I'll cover is the Zygmondi and the Palmer system. Zygmondi and Palmer were two dentists whose full name was Adolf Zygmondi and Corydon Palmer. Both of them introduced the tooth rotation system, right? And this was in the year of 1800s. Okay, but in the year of 1947, the ADA that was American. Write it down, American. Dental Association. They introduced the system again. That is the Zygmondi and Palmer. Okay, and this system basically is commonly used in the United Kingdom. Okay, so this system basically states that in this we use letters and the numbers, right? If I talk about the deciduous, that is in the primary dentition. So remember, I did talk about that in primary we have is the two, one, two. In permanent, we have is the two one two three where we have uh, here that is two premolars plus one molar is absent. Remember that, okay? So in deciduous, we have is the letter that is A to V, and in numbers we have is the one to eight that is the for the permanent dentition. Okay? Now write it down. Okay? So how we represent the tooth here is basically by some quadrants, right? So if I talk about the axillary quadrant, in that case. 
and the mandibular so in maxillary we have is the right and left again here we have is the right and left okay so now look here if i talk about any of the dentition here maxillary is above the line and the mandible is below the line okay now if i talk about the right side and this is the right side so we say this becomes a quadrant system here also it is a quadrant system so we say it is notified as like this for the left it becomes like this again again for the mandible we have is somewhat like this and then we have is the this is how you represent the quadrant system in the zygmondian palmar the length indicate here that is the horizontal and the vertical so guys this is the occlusal plane so remember i did talked about the uh, two surfaces here so you know the occlusal surface in the lowers and also the occlusal in the above okay so now what i do is i simply close them now you see how beautifully the upper tooth and the lower tooth they occlude or that plane in which this happened is called as the occlusal plane you can see here this is the occlusal surface of the above occlusal on the below and the plane is called as the occlusal plane so here we have is the occlusal plane so now you can see here that this basically is the quadrant system okay this is the midline as you can see midline becomes here and this we have is the occlusal plane and in this case also we have the similar in open uh, position that is this is the upper teeth arranged here and the lower is also arranged in the mandibular part right so letters are a to e as you can see here and numbers are 1 to 8 then the horizontal line represents the occlusal plane this one and the vertical is the midline this becomes the mid line okay so now let us try to solve some of the questions here so now let us try to identify which letters or the numbers represent which tooth so if i talk about the deciduous here so we have is the a b c d and e okay and in the permanent again we have is the 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right so let's name them so you can see that the a represents is the central incisor this becomes the lateral incisor this is the canine this is the first molar and the second molar because in the primary dentition the premolars are absent and the third molar is also absent in this case we have is the central incisor lateral incisor canines first premolar second premolar first molar second molar and the third molar respectively okay so guys now we have to name this following two numbers right so in the first we have is the number okay and we will first denote the maxilla on the mandible in this case so you can see this becomes the occlusal plane this is the vertical so this becomes the upper part right so this is the maxillary write it down maxillary again okay. if you check it here this becomes the right side and this is the tooth number 1 that is central incisor so we say it is maxillary right central incisor okay next the next one so in the next it becomes again it is a maxillary only but the quadrant gets changed like this so this becomes maxillary left central incisor again okay so next we have is the e so guys this uh, letter is used in the deciduous system so here we again have is the this quadrant so this is basically a mandibular again this becomes the left side and this is the tooth number central lateral canine first and second molar this becomes second molar now again for the deciduous here only so we have is a central incisor here this is the maxillary then right central incisor again we have it for the permanent so in this case permanent we have the 6 this becomes a 6 here so this becomes maxillary right so central incisor lateral canine first second pre and we have the first molar right so the name of the tooth should be on the tip of the tongue that is how it is arranged central lateral canine first premolar second premolar and the first second and third molar okay right this is all about the tooth rotation system how do we notify it next question the surface facing towards the adjoining tooth in the same dental arch that is the same dental arch is called as the occlusal surface facial incisal or the proximal so guys again we have the surface of the tooth here right so you can simply check out the previous video i discussed in detail about the whole surfaces but in this case let us try to again revise it okay so let us say the molars in the mandibular area right so again for the first molar mesial distal buccal 
lingual and the occlusal okay for second molar mesial distal buccal lingual and the occlusal if we look at the both the tooth here that is the first and second molar so we have the distal of first molar and the mesial of the second molar right so surfaces facing towards adjoining tooth that means in this dental arch we have the adjoining tooth here and then we see that the distal of first molar faces the mesial of the second molar and correctly we call it as proximal surfaces so here the answer becomes the proximal surface this is the answer okay next question so four teeth that are having mesial surfaces which are contacting each other are so guys uh, let us try to again answer this question also so let us look the incisors here so we have is the upper central incisor this becomes the right side left okay so we have the right central incisor in the upper and the left here also again in the right and the left lower incisors right so here we have is the midline okay so for this incisor which is at the right side this becomes the mesial surfaces this is contacting the mesial of the left central incisor okay so we have two incisors which are contacting the each other that is the two mesial surfaces contacting each other okay now in the lowers also we have the same you can see this becomes the midline okay and we have is the mesial surface of the uh, central incisor that is in the lower side and also for this one also it becomes the mesial surfaces so we have one two and three and four so the answer becomes that the upper and lower central incisors are the four tooth in which the mesial surfaces are contacting each other except this we don't have any kind of tooth which contacts the mesial surfaces of each other okay right so that is all about the sigmoidine palma yeah one more thing we have remaining is the disadvantages so guys in disadvantages you can see that the chances of error is there how come so in this case what you see here that we have is the maxillary right central incisors so now if simply i change it like this so now it becomes the maxillary left central incisor that means in this case a simple change of a line can change the whole tooth name that is why we have the chances of error next it is not compatible with computers and word processing system so guys we have to you know do this kind of quadrant mechanism systems like this so it becomes really tough for the systems and the computers to write on the systems and again print it out that is also a tough job that is all about the disadvantages okay so zygmunty palmer has been completed so now let's talk about the text that is the universal system system is also called as the american system so write it down okay and it's commonly used in the united states so guys zygmunty and palmer is commonly used in united kingdom and universal is commonly used in united states okay one more what we can see the difference here is in zygmunty and palmer we used to write the symbolic quadrants like this okay somewhat like this okay but in universal or the fdi we don't do any kind of quadrants system okay one similarity in this case we can see is in zygmunt and palmer we used to have letters and numbers okay same applies for the universal also but in fdi we only have is the numbers here we don't have any kind of letters okay right so first we have is the letters okay so it starts from the a to j and then from k to t then we have is the numbers that is starting from the 1 to 16 and 17 to 32 so guys as you can see a to j and k to t or whatever the thing will be in the permanent it happens in this direction that is from left to right sorry right to left and this is how it appears okay that means it is occurring in a clockwise direction so the system that is universal it is a clockwise directional system okay like this right and remember that we already discussed that here what we see is the central lateral canine first and second molar so this becomes that is the deciduous in this deciduous case it starts from the maxillary right second molar so you can see maxillary begins from right second molar and here mandibular it starts from the k side so k becomes the mandibular left second molar we have is the left second molar same applies for the permanent that is the uh, this becomes third molar and that is the right side and this becomes the left third molar here okay right guys so let us now try to solve some of the questions in the universal system okay the 3 9 30 and m okay so first three is the numbers and then we have is the letter so guys letter basically is for the deciduous condition so this becomes for deciduous write it down here the letters stands for deciduous okay and the number stands for the permanent 
ओके सो वी हैव द फर्स्ट दैट इज द थ्री नंबर टूथ सो गाइज हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई द नेम ऑफ द टूथ सो इट स्टैंड फॉर द परमानेंट एडिशन एंड अगेन सो वी हैव वन टू एंड थ्री दैट इन द मैगजरी एरिया सो वी हैव इज द मैगजरी देन वी हैव इज द राइट साइड ओके एंड टूथ बिकम सेंटर लैट्रल कनाइन फर्स्ट सेकेंड प्री मोलर्स एंड वी हैव इज द फर्स्ट मोलर सो दिस बिकम्स मैगजरी राइट फर्स्ट मोलर लेट स्टार्ट टू क्विक गाइज सो इन द नाइन नाइन बिकम्स योर मैगजरी देन वी हैव इज द लेफ्ट सेंट्रल इंसाइजर तो थर्टी बिकम्स द मैंडिबुलर राइट फर्स्ट मोलर्स ओके सेंट्रल टू या दिस बिकम्स फर्स्ट मोलर मैंडिबुलर एंड द एम स्टैंड फॉर द डेसिडोर सो हियर एम विल बी द सेंट्रल लैटल क्राइन सो हियर वी हैव इज द मैंडिबुलर एंड लेफ्ट दिस बिकम्स मैंडिबुलर left canine okay so that is how we write the tooth rotation here in the universal system okay now one more thing here that i have missed is the disadvantages so guys the disadvantage here is first of all you'll have to memorize it which is very difficult so it's not practically possible so we say it's difficulty in memorizing okay right so now let's talk about is the fdi system see is that new system used to came okay and the previous got replaced that is i told you that the ada that is american dental association it recommended the zigmondi and palmer in 1947 okay and then it recommended the reversal in the 1968 okay and finally we have the current that is the fdi system which is commonly used all over the world that is the federation dental international okay it is accepted by who and the iida that is it stands for world health organization and then we have is the iida which is international association for dental research right so it is widely accepted all around the world it's also called as the two digit system that is we have is the first and second digit okay so the first indicates the quadrant and second indicates the tooth within a quadrant so guys first of all we should remember that we have is the four quadrant so we say the first digit will have four quadrant so in deciduous we write it down like 5 to 8 that is we have 5 here in all the first quadrant six in second quadrant in third we have is the seven and fourth we have is the eight okay the same applies for the permanent here okay so in the permanent what we have is the one two four so this becomes one two three and the four okay this is the first digit in second digit it stands for the tooth number actually because in deciduous we have is the five teeth in one quadrant that is two one two and in permanent we have is the two one two three that is two plus one three plus two five and then we have is the plus that is eight so we have is the eight teeth in one sorry in one quadrant okay right so guys one more thing here what you can see is that in uh, universal system we used to say that the tooth number is 30 or 29 or 27 like this okay but in fdi we don't say like 71 or 72 what we do is we say 71 or 72 just like we say 35 or 36 it's not like 35 36 that is wrong okay right so let us try to solve some of the questions so first we have is the 51 that is the 51 tooth is basically a deciduous teeth why because we know that 5 to 8 is a deciduous dentition uh notation in this case right that means we can say that here we have is the 5 so it becomes the maxillary right so this is becomes maxillary right again we have is the 51 so this becomes one number tooth this is central incisor okay next we have is the 11 so guys one stands for the permanent because we have 1 to 4 in the permanent so we say this becomes the maxillary this one only maxillary right again we have is the central incisor now you can see here that both the tooth are central incisor but the difference here is that 51 basically means the deciduous teeth and the 11 here means the permanent teeth okay now next we have is the fourth so guys don't try to remember this whole content here simply try to apply your own logic okay that is we know we have the four quadrants so this becomes 1 2 3 and 4 okay then we have the teeth arranged here so just remember that if i talk about the four three that means just imagine we have 1 2 3 and 4 that means in the mandibular area next this becomes the right side this is the left side so we say mandibular left so we'll write it down first of all mandibular left okay or the tooth comes for the permanent addition so we have is the central lateral and the canine that is in the third number two so this becomes mandibular left canine 
that is how you write the name of the tooth here next we have the 62 guys so 62 stands for the deciduous here so we can say this is maxillary okay and again we can write it down like this maxillary left central and incisor okay so that is all about the fdi system okay so now what is the advantage in this fdi system is the advantage here is it's very easy for verbal communication and practice how come so guys for example a patient has came to me and he has complain of dental caries or attrition or maybe an uh, fractured tooth okay so for example he has multiple dental caries in that oral cavity so i cannot always write that the patient is having uh, the caries in the mandibular left incisors or maxillary canines or whatever the tooth may be i can simply say that there is dental caries okay dental caries with respect to i can say 3 6 4 6 2 4 or maybe 1 8 whatever i may write so now what you see that any other doctor can simply understand that the 3 6 stands for this number 2 that is the maxillary sorry the mandibular left first molar this is how he will be able to understand that which tooth has the caries here okay simply i can also write that uh, let's suppose i have done the rct or maybe i have done the gic restoration so in that case it is done with respect to tooth number let's suppose in this case i can write 5 1 or maybe uh, 8 3 whatever i may write verbally it is very easy for me to communicate and in the practice also it's very easy for me to write it down okay so that is all about the fdi system okay now if a question comes for a 10 marks or a 5 marks that is what is tooth number system you can simply write the whole main main points that is first we have the zigmontine palmer universal and then we have the fdi system write the main content don't write this all uh, other things that i have written here that is only for your explanation and understanding okay right so write the main points and do make sure that you write the whole this content that is a quadrant form in all the systems here okay that is how you will get the good marks so guys that is all about the two number system so i hope you have enjoyed the video so do like share subscribe and comment down below topics you want me to make a video on that's all for today thank you and have a nice day